Good evening. I'm Siwabili Rose Amador, and this is Native Voice TV. This is Native Voice TV. This is Native Voice TV. And this is Native Voice TV. And this is Native Voice TV. People do hear us and remember us that we were on Native Voice Television first. Saw them first. We're watching Native Voice TV. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Siwapili Rose Amador, and this is Native Voice TV. Well, welcome to the show. This evening, we're going to learn about services for the Native American community. I'd like to welcome Yvonne Marshall. Welcome, Yvonne. Thank you. And you're going to tell us about how maybe the audience can be involved, or they may know somebody that can help out. But before we talk about what you're working on, why don't you give me some of your background? Well, I was born and raised in Pocatello, Idaho, which is pre next to a border town next to the Fort Hall Indian Reservation. So uh, my mother's Shoshone Bannock from Idaho, and my dad's Eastern Shoshone from Fort Washakie, Wyoming. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was primarily raised out there, mm -hmm. went to high school, graduated from Idaho State in social work, got my bachelor's in social work, and then later on went and uh, worked for the tribes, the Shoshone Bannock tribes. There and in Idaho? Yes, in Idaho, in the Fort Hall Reservation. Oh, okay. And uh, we, I did CPS, Child Protection Services, and I worked in the General Assistance Program, mm -hmm. and uh, that was with the Social Services Department. And then I went on and worked as a medical social worker with the Counseling and Family Services for, for the Tribal Health there on the Fort Hall Reservation. Oh, okay. So... How does that differ from California? Oh, um... I mean, the people, it, it, I guess the people are the same. I mean, I'm still in the Indian community, so uh -huh. it's still the same um, in regards to, you know, the, the population. But in working with a reservation and city, is, it's totally different. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's quite the opposite. You know, the tribes are, you know, it's uh, sovereign. So had our own laws, right. own set of ways of doing things. So and out here it's um, you know it's state laws and so there's a lot of um, a, you know just a lot different regulations mm -hmm. so and what brought you to California uh, well I'd always wanted to come out here since so I was brother. in high school <laughs> I had family out here my brothers oh, lived okay. out here and so I have a family and yeah. nieces so I came and um, I moved out here in 2007 and worked with uh, the Golden Gate Regional Center, and worked with the disabled population doing case management with them. Oh, okay. So I did I bet that. you don't miss the snow, or do you? I do. You do? I do. <laughs> I miss having a white Christmas. Uh -huh. And I also, well, I like to go and play in the snow. Like to do you ski go back and, and visit often? I do, yeah, at least once a year. Oh, well, that's so good. I'm actually going back next week, so. Did I see you, you play flag football? I play do. Football? I play flag football just for in fun. In the snow. <laughs> well, um, I did. In, back in Idaho, I played flag football. and There were a couple of games that there, uh -huh. there was snow, so oh, it was fun. pretty cold. So. I was raised in Pennsylvania, so I'm familiar with the snow, too. So tell me about the program you work for now. So I uh, began working with American Indian Child Resource Center mm -hmm. uh, there in Oakland, California. And I started working in May as a recruiter and um, but prior to that I had volunteered with them and had gone out to some powwows and did uh, sat at the, the booth mm -hmm. that we do the recruitment and um, just spread the word of we're just trying to get more Native American foster homes. And why are more homes needed? Are there is there a lack of them? There, are, there is a lack of Native American foster homes and um, not just Native American, um, but just homes that are sensitive to the culture and that uh, would be expose the children that are placed in the homes, expose them to the Indian community and the mm -hmm. traditions and keep that tie with either the family or the tribes and uh, just the way, um, the way of the people. Mm -hmm. So from wherever the, the child is from, from whichever tribe, so. Now I would assume that, you know, people think of being a foster parent, being a, a, 
a difficult process to get into. They may think, well, you know, I'd like to be a foster parent, but it might be really complicated to get in. What is the application process? The application process, it kind of starts out just conversation with our agency, with the social worker, with myself, and uh, we just kind of feel, you know, see where the, the family is at, what the parents are, you know, um, financially and how their, their household is, mm -hmm. and just kind of do a, a mini screening. And then if we think that you're a good candidate and you'd be a good fit, we go ahead and do the application process. And um, it's, it, it, can, it can differ how long the application process takes because um, there's, you know, we require first, you be first aid, uh, first aid and CPR certified and uh, to do a, com do a complete background check, fingerprinting, and um, we do what is called a home study. So we come into the home and go through tons and tons of questions. So mm -hmm. um, it can, it, we really dig into the, the, the families, their, their, their core, I mean, who they mm -hmm. are and how they operate day to day and what their values are. Um, you know, give them certain situations if a child you know, has to go to school, you know, how are they gonna get there? Mm -hmm. um, so we do a lot of uh, questions, uh, but we do go into the home. So, and that, that process can take a couple of months, several mm -hmm. months, so. Uh, and who could apply? Is it uh, Native families or anybody? Or? Anybody could apply. Of course, we, you know, we really, really want Native American mm -hmm. families and, uh, but it, you don't have to be Native American. We just, we're looking for homes that are gonna share the culture with the children that are placed with them. Um, you know, take them to events and just give them that choice Exposure. to explore, mm -hmm. explore their, their identity and who, mm -hmm. you know, that side of them, so. Now, is it difficult, I mean, as far as, um does someone have to have a, a very high income in order to be a foster parent or what, I mean? No, not, no, they just have to be able to meet their household needs now. Mm -hmm. You know, right. um, whatever their household needs are now. And um, there is a supplement that they receive if a child is, if they're certified and a right. child become, uh, is placed with them, they get uh, a stipend from from our agency, and it depends, the amount of the, the monthly stipend depends on the age of the child, so. How long will a child stay with a foster family normally? Is there a limit or? No, there's not a limit, um, but it's, certain homes are for more emergency based, you know, mm -hmm. if, if a child is removed and they need somewhere to go just for that immediate care, so they could, it just be, it could just be overnight or um, you know, a couple days. And then there's the more long-term, mm -hmm. where it could be months, um, even up to years. So it, it just kind of depends on the foster parents and what they're looking for and what, what's good for them. Oh, okay, so it depends on the family itself, whether it's Correct. going to be a long-term, say family or a overnight type of emergency situation. Correct, yes. And for the emergency situations, you usually use families that have more experience or? Well, um, not necessarily, no. Um, it's not more, that they have mm -hmm. more experience or it's, uh, it's, it's just what works for them. Uh -huh. So what, what they feel comfortable with. Are many of the children adopted from the fo by the po uh, foster parents? It, it does or can lead, it? yeah, it can lead to adoption if they choose so. Mm -hmm. And uh, our, our agency actually doesn't do the adoption piece we're just a um, foster family agency, mm -hmm. so, um, but it, it can lead to adoption if that's, if, you know, if the, the, the child and the family fit and it works and they're happy and mm -hmm. so. So we did talk to a gentleman at one of the powwows who said that he was a foster parent. First, I guess he was a volunteer, then he was a foster parent, mm -hmm. and then he did adopt, I think, one or two children mm -hmm. after he was a foster parent. So that's good, you know, that they became a family. Yeah. permanent family after that. Now, once someone goes through the process, what do they have to do to be certified? Do they have to get take tests or licenses or you were saying? So that's a part of the home study that we do. Uh -huh. We require 12 hours of training. We go into the home. 
and we go through an array of different policies and um, and just different types of regulations and the home has to be you know up to a certain standard and making sure the home you know meets all those physical requirements mm -hmm. and um, and then we go through the questions of for each parent their background their um, you know where they work mm -hmm. um, different types of parenting um, parenting types and how they you know we really just dig into the parents mm -hmm. and and um, give them certain situations and um, and also we go into you know their their children if they have children mm -hmm. and um, and also we go into their background the parents background um, like their parents and how mm -hmm. they were raised and how their relationship was with their parents and so it, it's quite detailed and, mm -hmm. and sometimes people almost it's intimidating it, it, it can be intimidating or they wonder oh my gosh this is it almost feels intrusive or um, but it's not that we're trying to we're, we're just you know we're placing a situation. child home or a child in their home and we just want to know sure they're safe too. everything about that person and yeah. and really get to the core of why they want to be a foster parent mm -hmm. and um, you know just learning about them helps us to do that. So you you do a, a mix of uh, say families without children and family with children. Right. It could go either way. Right. It could go either way. Now how does this pertain to the Indian Child Welfare Act? So the Indian Child Welfare Act is a federal mandate that requires when agencies, state agencies, county agencies remove Indian children they are to try to identify where that child is from, which tribe they're affiliated with mm -hmm. or enrolled with, and then contact them. And the, the act um, states that they have to place, try to place with family or a tribal foster home or a foster home that's, um, a, a Native American foster home or a foster home that's uh, approved by the tribe or a tribal agency. So. Oh, okay. Well, let's pause for a moment and we'll get more information from Yvonne. We'll be right back. Looking for the skills and training you need to get a new career? Call CTC, the Center for Training and Careers, and start working towards that new career today. Call CTC in San Jose. You want to find out what's going on in your community? El Observador is San Jose's bilingual weekly newspaper. Go to your local newsstand and pick up your free copy today. And don't forget to mark your calendars for the 2010 Mexican New Year. Come celebrate Año Conejo on March 13th and 14th, Saturday and Sunday at the National Hispanic University, located at 14271 Story Road, San Jose, California. And here's just a small example of what you'll see at what's become the largest Mexica celebration in the nation.
remember to mark your calendars for Saturday and Sunday, March 13th and 14th, and come join us at the National Hispanic University. Join us in celebrating the 2010 Mexica New Year on Yoconejo, and be a part of the largest Mexica celebration in the nation. For more information, you can go to www.aztecdancers.com. We'll see you there. Thanks for joining us. We're here with Yvonne Marsh, and we're learning about the foster care services and the programs here in the Bay Area. Um, so we've been talking about some of the qualifications necessary and the process. Now, is there a cost for someone to go through the process? Not uh, directly from the agency, not from American Indian Child Resource Center. Mm -hmm. it, it is a free application. But there are some requirements that may cost, such as a CPR and first aid training. And there are some requirements that you, you may have to do to your home to, um, uh, to, you know, to change your home that you may have to purchase some things. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, there's, I guess, indirect costs, okay. you could say. But there's no cost, to actually, to go through the application process. No, the, the background check that we do, we, we um, American Indian Child Resource Center pays for that. So. Now, where are you based and what areas do you cover? Well, we're based out of Oakland. Our, our main office is in Oakland. We do have a satellite office in Sacramento where one of our social workers, uh, Jolene Smith, works out of. And we cover the greater Bay Area. Uh, we cover, let's see how many counties. There's um, San Francisco, Alameda, Contra Costa, Sacramento, San Joaquin, Santa Clara, Sonoma, and Napa. Oh, it's quite I hope I got area. them all in there. My goodness. Yes, it's it's quite the. So if someone's interested, lot. that you know they they see the program and they say this is something I think I would be interested in doing. Where would they start? Well, they could look uh, to our website. It's www.aicrc.org, or they could give us a call at the office, and uh, that's. 510-208-1870 and uh, they can contact myself and I usually I'm I'm kind of because I'm part-time so I'm there in the evening and mm -hmm. on weekends usually and you know out in the community so um, so you could always send a send an email and, and you said you started volunteering first and then you started working part-time right I started uh, volunteering first and and then the the position that I have is a part of I'm actually employed by Casey Foundation and that's a part of the the Bay Care what stands for Bay Area Collaborative of American Indian Resources and okay. it's an array of agencies within the area, and we're trying to actually get more agencies involved with that, because uh, right now we only have San Francisco and Alameda counties, agencies within mm -hmm. those counties involved right now. So. What drew you to that, to volunteering for that particular program? You said at one time you were for Child Protective Services as well. Right, I just, I really, really enjoyed the foster parenting piece uh, when I did child protection because mm -hmm. I actually worked with the foster parents and mm -hmm. did home studies on the reservation and I just I really really enjoyed that and so when I when I moved out here and I was working for the regional center I I really missed the Indian community I was really just kind of feeling like oh, I'm something's missing so I I reached out to uh, Mary Trimble Norris at American Indian Child Resource Center and you know, I just said I'm willing to do anything. You know, I want to just volunteer and help out. And so she had me come to a powwow, and I started doing the powwow booths. Mm -hmm. I did a couple, and uh, I just really liked it. And Mary, you know, really liked me doing it. And so the position became available in May. And so did, did, did you have, um, do you, did you see a lot more people receptive to being foster parents on the reservation versus the urban communities? I would say it's kind of the same uh -huh. because the I think Indian people were they're already doing foster parenting in a way and you know they're taking you know grandmas the extended and families they, yes. they had they take in the, mm -hmm. the the kids and it they don't it's not necessarily a process and so um, so we're already doing it 
So Yvonne, you wear two hats. You also work for another program. Tell us about that program. Right, I work for the Friendship House in San Francisco Drug and Alcohol Inpatient Treatment Center. Uh huh. And what do you do there? I'm a case manager for the people that are transitioning out and that are actually have been in the program for six months mm -hmm. and they're just they're working, they're either or going to school or both, and they're just trying to get back into the community or go back to wherever they're from and and start their their sober life. And how long is that program? Six months or? The program is, well, it's three it's months residential? to a year. It's Yeah, inpatient residential, and it can last for three months to a year. Mm -hmm. And it just depends on where the client is and how, what they, what they want to do, what their goals are. So. And then as a case manager, do you help them find employment, or is that something they might already have, or how well, do you follow through with them? Well, kind of both. Um, I do help them to find work, and uh, some of them, may already have contacts mm -hmm. in this, you know, within the area and have work. Uh, so, so, yeah, I help with, and I also help with the housing if oh, they're okay. transitioning out and want to stay within the, in San Francisco or in the Bay Area mm -hmm. and help them to find housing. And so what's the maximum they can stay there? A year. A year. And then, so you try and transition them out before that year's up, I'm assuming. If yes. they don't already yes. have housing. Correct. And, uh, you know, it's up to a year, but, you know, it's just very dependent on where the person's at in their treatment and, you know, how they're doing. And so it's, it's, um, it's reviewed on an ongoing basis. So. Give us a little bit of background of the overall program if somebody has somebody that they'd like to refer to the program. Well, there's a, they just, they would call intake and, um, they would just call our, our number, 415-865-0964. Do you always have and openings, or are you, what's the capacity there? Uh, I believe there, you know, there's, there's openings. Um, it, it just, it, it kind of depends. It, mm -hmm. it fluctuates because sure. it's an inpatient treatment center, and people go in and out. You know, a person could come in and leave the next day. So. And how is that program funded? Do the individuals pay, or is it funded through it outside? Can, it can be. You can privately pay, mm -hmm. or there, there's some um, some funding that you, you you have to meet the requirements mm -hmm. for. Um, but that would be something you would call and discuss with intake. So, but anybody, you know, anybody can go, and uh, it's. Uh, but primarily, our funding is for Native American, mm -hmm. uh, Native American and it's drug population, and, alcohol. and it's drug and alcohol. Oh, that's good. How long has right. that, pro that's been around for a long time, hasn't it? Yeah, the Friendship House is since um, the 70s, I believe, or 60s. Mm -hmm. It's been, it's been around for quite some time. So as a caseworker, you, you, um, you're on site full time? Yes, I am. I'm there eight to five, Monday through Friday, usually in the office. And how, what's the capacity of the, the entire center? How many? We, we, it's have, excuse me, we have 80 beds. And oh, it's quite a large facility. Yeah, we have 80 beds, and our staff is, we have on-call, 24-hour staff, so. That must be a lot of staff to go 24-7. How long have you been there? I've been there since August. Oh, okay. So, so you just jumped right into the community. That's great. <laughs> I did. I dove right in. I well, did. you have a I'm... lot of experience, so I'm glad you were able to bring that to the Bay Area. So thank you very much for being here. And I have a few minutes left, so I want to say a few things. <laughs> it's the end of the year. But if you're enjoying the program, support Native Voice TV because this program is brought to you because we want to educate the community. We want to bring bring people like Yvonne and services to the community and let, you know, you see what's going on in the Native community. There's a lot of different tribes, a lot of people that come into town, our relatives come in and we wanna bring everyone on to share their stories and what's going on in the Native community. We go out to the powwows, we've been to the Gathering of Nations, we go everywhere, but we, want it, we need your support. So we've been on for over six years now. And if you want us to continue to be on for you every Sunday at six o'clock, you have to support Native Voice TV too. So please do so. And we look forward to seeing you again next week at six o'clock.
See you then. Thank you for joining us. Good night.